have like the hi hat. Have, have you had your speed break before? Oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah. But can you, can you do two pedals still? That would be hard. Right? Do you need to move the snare drum in? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, we'll try it next One time I would like a demo. I would like a demo of that next time. Is it a demo? Can you demo that for us? Demo? Yeah. Check. Amen. Wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, why don't we all stand? Uh, we're going to worship the Lord this morning. Give God the praise. Give God the glory. And if you want to clap your hands and worship the Lord with us this morning, let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Sing it out. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. The land that is plentiful. Where your streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, found in the desert place. And though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll Turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be your name, the sun shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, the suffering, this pain. Blessed be your name, every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. 
blessed be your glory. Let's sing, you give and take away. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we bless your name. Sing it again, blessed be, blessed be the name. Oh, the name of Jesus. We bless your name, oh Lord. I'm the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. God, we give you glory. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our God is good. Amen. Thank the Lord. I got a song and I sing it loud. Praise is pouring out. Praise is pouring out. Sing it again. Hey, Amen. Let's sing it out together. Blessed assurance. And blessed assurance. And Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. His glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit. I'm washing His blood, oh, and I can't stop singing, oh, this freedom song, oh, I'm praising my Savior all the day long, all the day long. I got a song and I sing it loud. Praise is born out. Praise is born out, and I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out, you have brought me out, yeah. Blessed assurance, and Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Of glory divine, is heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. I'm washing His blood, oh, and I can't stop singing, oh, this freedom song, oh. I'm raising my Savior all the day long, all the day long. I got a song and I sing it loud. Praise is pouring out, praise is pouring out. Oh, and I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out, you have brought me out, yeah. yeah. Amen. We're going to testify this morning. We need you to help us sing. You gotta sing the yeses, all right? Amen. There are, there are answers to questions. Are you ready? Let's worship the Lord. Are you ready? We're gonna do one, two, one, two, three. Did he heal you? Yes. Did he free you? Yes. Did he save your soul? Yes. Did he make you whole? Yes. Did he wash you? Yes. Transform you? Yes. Redeem you? Yes. And cleanse you? Yes. Did he set you free? So will you praise him? Yes. Will you worship him? Yes. Will you lift him high yes. with all your mind? Yes. 
Will you lift the sound? Will you make it loud? You got a song, somebody shout it out. I got a song and I sing it loud. Praise is pouring out, praise is pouring out. And I will dance in your freedom now. You brought me out. Let's sing it again. I got a song. I got a song and I sing it loud. Praise is pouring out. Praise is pouring out. And I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out. You have brought me out. Yeah. Give God glory this morning. Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord this morning. Thank the Lord. Enter into his presence. Let's give him glory. How many know our God is worthy of all the praise this morning, all the honor and all the glory? Why do we get excited in church? Amen. Because we've been redeemed. Hallelujah. We've been set free from sin this morning. Let's worship the Lord. Let's ask God to help us to visit this place. Amen. As we sing this song, worthy of it all. And all the saints and angels bow before your throne. And all the before the Lamb of God and say, you worthy of it all, you worthy of it all, for from you are all things, to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing it out, all the saints. And all the saints and angels, they bow before your throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all the glory and day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise day and night night and day let incense arise Day and night, day and night, night and day, let our praise arise. Day and night, night and day, let our praise arise. Day and night, day and night, night and day, let our praise arise. Day and night, night and day, let our praise arise. of every praise from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory 
deserve the glory. Let's sing it one more time, church. Lift your voice. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of every word I ever utter, Lord. You are worthy of it all. Worthy, so worthy. All from you are our face. To you are our face. And you deserve the glory. That burn for hearts that burn, purify faith in deep, finer's fire, breath in one breathe. So we the church. Let's sing it out together, church. We need, we need a fresh wind, a fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Oh, holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out. 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 Pour 
Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. And learn of the redeemed. Prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing. 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 Move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Let all the redeemed prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Move upon our praise, sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out. Oh, Holy Spirit, would you hear our prayer this morning? Fill this place with your presence. Anoint this place, Lord. The power of your presence. Pour your spirit out. Holy Pour your spirit out. 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 Oh, why don't we just give the Lord praise this morning for all that he's done. Let's give him worship. Father, we worship your name. We lift up the name of Jesus this morning for you are holy, God. For you are worthy, Lord. You are the Lamb of God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. We worship you this morning, God. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. Thank the Lord this morning. Let's pray together, church. We need to believe God for prayer requests. We want to pray for the pastors in our fellowship, in our, in our church. We want to pray for leadership, our city. I'm praying for our country. Amen. We're believing God for your needs today. We want to remember our new converts that God would help them. We want to believe God for the Spirit of the Lord in this service this morning, that, you would help, that He would help us that he would visit us this morning. Amen. If you have a prayer request, I want to encourage you, bring it before God. How many believe God answers prayer to this morning? Amen. Let's put our faith into action. Lord, we come to you this morning. We're praying, helping us, God, visiting us this morning, that you would do a mighty work, that you would help us in this house and in this church this morning. I am believing you, God, for a breakthrough. I'm believing you for purpose. I'm believing you for direction this morning, God. God, that you would help us, that you would move upon this house this morning, God. Lord, hear every prayer request as we come before you, as we praise you, Lord, as we bring a praise and glory to your name, that you would help us. We believe that you're going to touch. We believe that you're going to move this morning upon every heart, upon every life, and upon every need. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody shouted, Amen. Let's give the Lord thanks, praise one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We're glad and we're happy that you're here with us. Amen. What a blessing to have you in church this morning. We want to welcome you. Amen. Before we have the announcements, I'm going to ask uh, impromptu that our brother Theo would come and just give us a quick uh, <laughs> update on what happened at Outreach yesterday. Amen. So outreach yesterday, uh, <laughs> it was actually really good. Um, outreach yesterday, we was uh, Brody, Chris, and I. We went out to um, West Edmonton Mall. Uh, we met up at Winners, started through Winners, and um, we just met some people, shared the gospel. I remember uh, specifically, we were speaking to uh, three teenagers. Like they were actually fighting over their shoes. 
Um, the other guy stepped on the guy's shoes, and he's like, hey, man, like, this, this is my friend, but he stepped on my shoes. Uh, I don't like him. And I'm like, hey, you know what, man? I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you how Jesus, like, you know, if you have Jesus Christ, you know, you, you have the ability to forgive, right? And I don't remember exactly what I said. And Brody actually uh, spoke as well. And at the end of the conversation, they actually hugged. And they, <laughs> they took the flyer. And it's like, you know what? We want to come to church. The guy's like, I actually want to come to church. I'm like, you know what? Praise God. <laughs> I'm happy. You know, just don't, have, don't, don't fight over the shoes. It's okay. You know, it, shoes gets cuff. You could move on. And, I, and then, but uh, we spoke to several people, had very good conversations. Um, it was a, a move of God. We loved it. A lot of people actually, a lot of, what, a lot of seeds planted uh, yesterday. And uh, t- only two minutes I have, so I'm not going <laughs> to prolong. <laughs> But no, I'll take that. Right, thank, <laughs> thank the Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, you're testifying what God is doing. You can have all morning. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful blessing to be in church this morning, and we're happy that you're here. And what a uh, just encourage that you're in the house of the Lord uh, this morning. Uh, what a blessing. Amen. Just a few announcements that we have. The church services are uh, normal. We have some uh, upcoming things uh, uh, that we have uh, um, want to let you know about in the future here. Uh, there is some men's meetings. Uh, we're going to be doing a partnership with our uh, mother church in Lloydminster. Uh, some back and forth men's meetings. And so if you're a man in this place, you want to take note of men's classes. We're going to try to do them once a month. Uh, on an ongoing basis, swapping back and forth from here to Lloydminster, and uh, we'll be driving up together if you want to come, and that'll be a great blessing. There is also a Toronto conference. I want to encourage you, if you uh, have never been to a conference, uh, to come to a conference, amen. Uh, it's a, a, a large investment to go. You've got to fly there. You have to uh, find yourself a place to stay and, and rent a car, do whatever you've got to do, but it is well worth the time and the money. There's a dimension around uh, conferences that are not in the regular services. You've got to see a bigger picture of our fellowship. We're, we're a part of, amen, and you get to hear uh, a preaching, and God speaks supernaturally at conferences. So May Conference is tr- uh, in uh, the 13th to 17th, this is in, uh, uh, um, it's, um, uh, I think they've moved now, but it's, it's somewhere right around Mississauga, amen, in Toronto, amen, a suburb of Toronto, so I, I come right by the airport there if you want to come for that. It starts on a Monday night, all of our conferences, except uh, October, are Monday to uh, Friday, it starts on a Monday night, all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and it ends all day Friday, all the last service Friday night. And if you'll come for that, it'll be a great blessing. This uh, conference in May, we have, uh, uh, I believe we have Scott Lamb coming to uh, uh, preach and uh, head up the conference. That'll be a great blessing. So if you can come uh, for the Toronto conference. Also, Prescott conference in July 8 to 12. Me and my wife will be going to the Prescott conference. If you want to join us and come, this is a a very expensive uh, uh, conference to go to, but uh, there is thousands of people. Uh, there's churches planted. There's missionaries planted. It will change your life. The first time I went to a, a Prescott conference, I came back, and I was not the same. Amen. You think, oh, it's just another conference. It's a bunch of church services. It is not. Amen. The power of God moves in conferences. So I want to encourage you to take note of those. And then the last of a, a really important uh, announcement, uh, um, we have a, a revival with Steve Bowman booked for July 18 to 21. This is going to be the only revival we're having this year, aside from maybe having someone come for a Sunday uh, towards the end of a year. But we are uh, just excited. Steve Bowman, is, is, uh, he's been to a missionary in Zambia. Uh, he was, uh, he's pastored churches. He's been a, uh, an evangelist for numbers of years, a very, very powerful p- preacher and speaker. So I want to encourage you. There's the date, July 18 to 21. If you can block it off in your calendar and support the work of God and the church uh, as we're going, we need all the support we can get. We're going to be inviting people and believing God that he's going to move uh, upon that. Amen. A few other quick announcements. There is a Sunday school we want to encourage you to come to. This is 9.30 a.m., it's adult Sunday school. Right now we're in a, a video series by Pastor Greg uh, Mitchell, just telling stories about how our fellowship began, giving principles, direction, understanding. It's been very, very good. Amen. If you uh, would come to that, it would bless you. Uh, once this series is completed, we're going to be go- jumping back into a teaching series, and those are, uh, we dive deep into the things of God, and we have time for questions, different things like this. It will grow you. It will mature you. Amen. You will learn about the things of God if you'll come there. There is food and fellowship every Thursday night. Uh, This is at our house, and we've incorporated the New Believers class into Food and Fellowship. So uh, New Believers class is 8 to 9 every Thursday, 
And uh, I should put on there Thursday, shouldn't I? It just says fellowship. That would be helpful. <laughs> but it is every Thursday night. Uh, fellowship, 7 to 12 is the fellowship, and then the class is 8 until 9. There's a couple, uh, uh, just recapping, men's discipleship class this Saturday at 10 a.m. if you want to come, men, and uh, uh, it'll be a blessing to your life if you'll come this Saturday, 10 o'clock, uh, for all the men. The Lloyd Minster um, men's uh, uh, um, uh, discipleship class is on the 24th of this month. Just a real quick housekeeping. Uh, uh, we want to uh, um, uh, just uh, ask you to help us keep our church clean. Uh, we are planning to clean the carpets this week. Uh, we have a machine that we've been, uh, someone's give, uh, lent to us, and so we're going to clean the carpets. We're having some issues with food and colored drinks being spilt on our uh, um, uh, very expensive chairs. Amen. The carpet is really ugly, but once we clean it, we're hoping to help uh, that you can help us a little bit keep this place clean. If you want food and drinks, maybe keep them out in the, in the hallway where we can clean them up easy, and uh, uh, that would be great. Obviously, if you want water or you have a lid on your vessel, that would be acceptable. Amen. Let's receive the offering this morning if our ushers would come. We believe in God just to help us. Thank the Lord. Amen. I hope that you're having a wonderful uh, beginning of your year. Amen. And I know that God has been blessing many people. I want to encourage you to give this morning. First Timothy six seventeen to 19 says, Command those who are rich in this present age, Not to be haughty, nor trust in uncertain riches, but to trust in the living God, who gives uh, 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 us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good with the riches that God gave them, that they would be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may hold uh, on to eternal life. Amen. The task before us this morning is a great task. We want to encourage you to be a part of that task, be a part of this church, and that is one way you can be involved is through your giving this morning. Amen. And as you give, I believe God would bless you. We have a common cause, and that is to see people saved, but not only see people saved, but see people uh, um, um, uh, moving forward, uh, uh, stay saved. Amen. And want to encourage you to give. It requires that we get involved financially. You can give numbers of ways. There's e-transfer giving. There's a kiosk in the lobby that accepts cards. If it is not working, uh, you can talk to Brother Lucci, amen, he's getting it ready to go, and he'll help you, hallelujah, <laughs> uh, if he remembers the password. I can't remember the password half the time, I gotta look it up in my notes, so God help us. Uh, passwords are the bane of society, amen. Uh, but if you want to give that way, you can also set up reoccurring giving. If you go to fed.ca for just give, you have to create an account with our uh, church software, but you can give via cards there, and they can set up reoccurring to give every month, every two weeks, every month, if you, get, uh, if you get paid the same amount, or you want to be a blessing every amount, amen, that'll be a great blessing to you. Just uh, on a side note, we are uh, taking up, uh, we are wanting to get a sign for our church, amen, so uh, this needs to be over and above our uh, regular giving, but if you want to help us to get a sign, uh, this is a, a, one of the mock-ups that we have um, for the sign. We had a company that uh, designed it for us, and um, a sign costs uh, $7,000, uh, give or take, uh, for that. Amen. And, and we are, uh, we are, they are okay with us having a banner up for now, but it's temporary, and they want us to take it down because it decreases their property value, I guess, and doesn't look nice. Uh, but we do want to have sign. We have this beautiful frontage that God has blessed us with, and so we are going to be saving for a sign, and we're going to try and get a sign uh, by uh, March or April, and so if God would stir your heart to give towards that over and above with your tithes, your offerings that keep the church going, uh, uh, we'd welcome you to give to that. Just mark it if you want to help us with that. Um, From now on, until we have enough money for the sign, we'll have a little uh, ticker going about how much money's come in, and it'll be an encouragement. We can bond together, and we can, uh, uh, we can be a blessing. Um, we've already seen numbers of people come to church. Uh, I have been talking to people who are like, oh, yeah, we've seen your banner. We've seen your sign, and uh, it, it is a great blessing to be on a main road, and if we can utilize that, it'll be utilized for the next five years plus as long as we're here, and God will, be, God will have the glory. People will know that uh, this is where God is moving. Amen. Let's just pray. As you give this morning, I want to encourage you to be a blessing, to give generously, and God will bless you, and God will increase you this morning in your life. Brother Lucci, would you pray and bless the offering?
Amen. We're going to sing a song. As we sing, you can take your kids, uh, let your kids follow Miss Marina to a nursery and to Sunday school, and they will be blessed and taught in the th- ways of the Lord. Let's sing this song. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful and where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place and though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, and blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Sing it one more time, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, and blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Thank the Lord. Amen. We appreciate all the musicians and the singers. Thank you guys so much for your uh, blessing this morning and uh, uh, giving your your time time towards that. Amen. We are just honored to have you in church this morning. If you have a Bible, you can turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke in chapter 10. Luke in chapter 10, verse 25 this morning. And we're uh, just going to believe God to help us and to uh, uh, speak uh, into our lives this morning as we uh, uh, come. We give God the glory and the praise. Amen. And I'm excited for what God is doing, what he's going to do. Amen. Just a quick report uh, uh, from uh, our uh, baby church in Calgary. Uh, We had uh, um, Dustin and Stephanie uh, send us a quick message on the group, if you hadn't seen it, but they had four teenagers saved at their Bible study on Friday night, and or sorry, last night, and uh, they had people there. Uh, They've been praying for people. Their church is growing, amen, and God is helping them. And uh, we planted that church a year and a half ago into Calgary, and they are uh, doing what we do. They're evangelizing, witnessing, and God is helping them, amen. Uh, What a blessing. That is, and so we're excited for that. If you have your Bible, Luke chapter 10 and verse 25, uh, this morning we're going to look at the word of the Lord. Amen. There's a uh, research team that they, uh, they did a study and they, they said this, the headline of this, of this uh, paper says, research, research reveals that publicly announcing goals makes you less likely to achieve them. And if you thought that telling everyone your goals creates accountability, think again. Amen. It goes on to say that researchers concluded that telling people what you want to achieve creates a premature sense of completeness. While you feel a sense of pride in letting people know what you intend to do, that pride does not motivate you and can in fact hurt you later on in life. Life. Amen. I want to preach a sermon. I'm going to tell go and do likewise. We're going to look at a story this morning of three different men who decided and made choices around obeying God or not. Amen. And I want to confront some issues, but also encourage you to be compassionate Christians this morning. Amen. And, uh, uh, and not just be people who announce that we're Christians and it leads to no fruit, amen, but be people who walk in the fruitfulness of God. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it or your interpretation? And the lawyer answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly or rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Leave it to a lawyer to put in a, uh, and what exactly does that mean, right? 
Amen. Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered him and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves. The thieves stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samarian, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you should spend over top of this, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these things, uh, these three rather, do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And the lawyer said to him, he who showed mercy on him. So Jesus said to the lawyer, go and do likewise. Let's pray. God, I'm believing you that you're going to speak this morning, challenging in our hearts, helping us anoint my words, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit and let people hear what you would speak What they need to hear this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's talk about the truth and compassion. The lawyer in our text was a man, uh, uh, obviously right with God. He was probably a a Sadducee, and uh, he was a man who was looking, obviously, for truth. He was asking the right questions. He comes to Jesus, and he he asks Jesus uh, uh, the question, how do I get eternal life? How do I make sure that when I die, I don't go to hell? That's what he was asking, amen. How do I I make sure that when I die, I'm not going to go to where the devil is supposed to go? How do I know I'm going to spend eternity with God? How do I know that? And Jesus, he, he said, what do I need to do? And Jesus said, what do you already know that you need to do? You know, that that is a question that everybody should be asked, Amen. What do I need to do, God? And and God's response would be, what do you already know that you need to do? Amen. (laughs) Most of us on the inside, God has already been pushing us towards what we need to do. All we have to do is do it. But he answers with the simple truth, and that is you put God first. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. That is your, your, uh, uh, your physical ability, your strength, and your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Simple truth is if you will do that to its entirety, you will make heaven your home. The simple truth that this morning is that if you would love God with your entire heart, your entire mind, your entire soul, and you would love your neighbors as yourself, listen, you would make heaven your home. Amen. Because by doing so, uh, you would only be able to do that by the power of Jesus Christ living inside of you. Here is this man, but he went on and he said, I I want to justify myself. He says, who is my neighbor? And that is just like people, isn't it? (laughs) The Bible says uh, you need to love God. Okay, we understand that. But you need to love your neighbor. Okay, no problem. Who exactly is my neighbor? What does that entail? What are the caveats? What are the loopholes? Amen. That's what he was asking. What are the loopholes? You ever, you ever tried to get a loophole with God? God, I know what you want, but like, do you want that now? <laughs> God, I know what you want me to give. You've done this one. I've done this one. God, I know what you want me to give. But like, do you mean right now or do you mean like when I'm a millionaire? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lord, I know what you want me to say to my wife, and I know what I should say to apologize, but do you mean like, I have to apologize now, or can we, you know, we make up, we want loopholes, right? We have compassionate ideas, we have compassionate thoughts, but some people, or most people, rarely have compassionate actions. This man, he's like, I can love my neighbor as long as my neighbor is lovable, amen. (laughs) <laughs> you ever had an unlovable neighbor? I can love my wife, but right now my wife, Pastor, you don't understand. She is not very lovable. I can love my husband. Now, there was no amens on there. Man, yeah, hey, man, you missed a place. 
There was my husband. He, you know, Pastor, I, I respect my husband, and I'm, be, I'm with him. But right now, he's a jerk, so I'm not going to honor him, and I'm not going to. No, not right now. God, I know what I should do, and I know where I should go. But, uh, but what are the, like, how far does that go? Who is exactly my neighbor? And what he was trying to do was justify. Why was he trying to justify himself? Because he hadn't loved his neighbor, and he knew it. So he says, if I can find a way to that I can still uh, do what I want to do, yet technically get to heaven, then I'm going to find that. If I can find a way to love God and have my faith and my Christianity, but not love my neighbor and not do what the Bible requires me to do, then I'm going to choose option C, amen, and, and I'm going to do that. He hadn't loved his neighbor. What can I get away with or how can I justify my actions? Think about Cain and Abel, the first murder in human history. Uh, uh, Cain murders his brother and God says, uh, comes to Cain. He says, Cain, where is your brother? And, 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 and Cain's response is, am I my brother's keeper? In other words, what business do I have talking and dealing with or getting involved in other people's lives? What responsibility do I have to my neighbor? Amen. You know, it's easy to love people that are lovable. There's a place in the Bible, and I wish I would have thought of this earlier, but the Holy Ghost just put it in my mind now. There's a place in the Bible that says, if you love people who only love you, you're the same as a sinner. Because anybody can love people who love them. It is hard to love someone who doesn't love you. That's when you become like God. You know that Jesus died, not just for you, you the, the nice church people who love Jesus and love what he did. And, but Jesus died for the murderers and the drug addicts that are downtown right now. And he, and he died for the people who blaspheme his name and he died for the people who, the Nazi people who killed his, own, his, his beloved people. He, he the, oh, pastor, I don't know about that. I don't know how you can. No, he died for them. They chose to live in their sin, and probably most of them end up in hell. But he still loved them. He still died. He still poured out his blood for them. And he said, Father, forgive them. Who is he talking about? Them is all people who have, who have uh, uh, hurt him or wronged him, who have sinned. He said, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they did. And standing in front of him were people who literally nailed him to the cross. How could they not know what they did? But he was really crying that out for humanity. They don't know what they're doing, God. Have compassion on them. When we talk about loving your neighbor, amen, we don't just mean the person next to you or uh, the, new, uh, uh, the new fad, your, your number neighbor, amen. We don't just mean the people uh, uh, in our church. We don't just mean the people in our circle or in our business or our job or the people in, um, in, in our club that we go to or the people that we like. We're talking about the world as a whole, that we are to be people of compassion who love our neighbors. Think about the compassionate actions. In our text, there's three men, and Jesus uses them, and, and most scholars believe he was telling an actual story that happened, and everybody knew the story. There was a priest. This was a, a man of God. A priest was someone who was supposed to be ceremonially clean, that means that they kept themselves. It was someone who was super, super, super dedicated to the things of God. They went to every Bible study. They went to every service. They were at every prayer meeting. They never went to the clubs. They never drank. They never did marijuana. They never looked at pornography. They were kept themselves clean. It was something, it was a, a family lineage of priests. And they dedicated themselves to the Lord. They were holy. They were to be mediators between God and his people. Yet here is this man, and he sees one of God's people who he's supposed to be a mediator in between. And he said, the Bible says he walked by, not even by him, but on the other side of the road. Jesus is telling us this morning, there are people who have close connections of, with God. There are people who love God. 
have qualifications, but they have no actions. They walk by on the other side of the road, amen, and they say, I am not going to be part of what God wants to do in that person's life. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He saw the issue, but there was no desire to do anything. How many Christians does that describe? We see the desire, but there's nothing, there's nothing within us that moves us to be a part of what God wants to do on the earth. I mean, no, we see the issues, amen. We'll go and vote, amen, when the time comes to vote, right? But we would never tell someone about Jesus. Oh, we will donate when it, when it feels good, but we would never put money into evangelism because we're walking by on the other side of the road. We're ceremonially clean. We're saved by faith, but we're not a, a, a compassionate Christian. Then there's the Levite. The Levite uh, uh, was a, a person. They were, the, they were the ministers. Every priest had to be a Levite, but not every Levite was a priest. The priests were the, were the pastors or the leaders. You could say the people who, who were supposed to be mediators. The, the Levites, they were the workers. They were the administrators in the Jewish uh, 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 understanding. They were the people who would, who would keep the church clean. They were the people who would do things. They would, they would uh, be mediators between uh, people. They would, uh, uh, they would do uh, uh, different things like this. Uh, they were uh, singers. They were musicians. They were gatekeepers. They were guardians. Uh, they were, their, whole, their whole inheritance was the kingdom of God, was the, was the church. So here were people who were, they were involved uh, to a point, Amen. Here was a man who had some sort of understanding. I must work in the kingdom of God. I must be a part of what I'm a Levite. This is my calling. This is my destiny to help people, to be a guardian, to be a lover, to be a supporter, to honor, amen, to sing, to worship, to facilitate the kingdom of God. Yet in verse 32, it says, when he arrived at the place, he came and looked and he passed by on the other side. In my mind, this is far worse. The first guy had plausible di- uh, deniability. He said, I, don't know, I thought he was already dead, and I'm a priest. I can't touch dead things, so uh, you know, I couldn't I'd wait for someone else to do it. The second guy, the Bible says he came over, and he looked at the guy. And then he passed by on the other side of the road. You know, that, that signifies there's some Christians who, who see the brokenness of the world, amen. They see the sin. They see the problems, but then they, they get busy and they pass by on the other side of the road. Life sweeps them by and all of a sudden uh, the people who were supposed to be the administrators, the, the helpers, the guardians, the keepers, the, 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 they, they were people who were supposed to lift people up in praise and worship and help them to pray and connect with their God, amen, still did nothing. They're emotionally satisfied, but the hurting man was still on the road. You know, the, there's a big problem in the, in the, in the, in the world today is, is people of God who, how do I say this tenderly? Don't. <laughs> the, the issue, we see the problems, but we don't do anything about it. I was talking with someone the other day, and one of the pastors, and he's like, he's frustrated. And we were talking and, and different things, and... and um, he says, I had this person in my church who came and said, why do I have to give? Why do I have to tithe? Why should I? Like, you know, that, that money is a lot of money. It comes out of my budget. I'm like, why should I sacrifice that? And we were talking, and he, and he, and he came to his conclusion. He said, he said, it's so weird. He's like, why are we asking God, God, how little should I give? And not asking God, how much should I be keeping? Think about it. God gives you this blessing and you're like, how much of this should I keep for me? When the reason God gave it to you in the first place is to be a blessing. We do that with the gospel. God gives us this 
beautiful gift of salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. But then we're like, we keep it to ourselves. We see the issues of the world, but we don't do anything about it. You know, the average Christian, and I don't know why I'm going down this road, I'm going to get in trouble, but the average Christian gives less than 2% of their annual salary. In fact, over all evangelicals, uh, over, they did a study, over all evangelicals, the average Christian donation to a church was $76. That's the average. That's taking the millionaires, the peasants, the penniers, the penniers, is that what you call it? The broke people. They're not broke. They just spend all their money on Netflix and chilling. <laughs> all right, they spend it off on the world. Anyway, that's a whole other sermon. I'm not going to go there. Please, God, help me. <laughs> I'm being seduced by the radical uh, scream at Breed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, right? The, 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 the average. They say the average, the average person who shares their faith, I think it's less than, less than 5% of Christians in their entire Christianity have shared their faith. Their entire Christianity? Less than 5%? How, how is that? So imagine if... if it was 85%. <laughs> Imagine if it was 85% how, the world, how media would change if Christians started standing up for their faith. But that's what this man did. He, he seen what the issue, but he passed it on the other side of the road. Then the third man was a Samaritan. And the Samaritan, the Samaritan was the arch enemy of the Jew. Uh, in actual fact, the, the, the Samaritans were, because of history, they were half-breed Jews. They didn't fully belong. They weren't Jewish, but they weren't Gentiles. They were half. And the Jews looked at them like dogs. They, they, were, they were very prejudiced against. They were different. They, it was like a totally different race, a totally different group of people. They lived on opposite sides, and they did not talk. They did not uh, 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 communicate. This is why it was crazy when Jesus went to talk to the Samaritan woman. Crazy. Not only a woman, but a Samaritan woman. Absolutely. Grounds for, for life termination. Amen. Yet here's a Samaritan. In verse 33, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and he bandaged his wounds. He was an arch enemy uh, of this man. Somebody that normally, under normal circumstances, they shouldn't interact. Yet uh, there was uh, something inside this man who seen him hurting and bleeding and says, I will go to him and help him. He had compassion. The word compassion, uh, it, if you look it up in the Greek, it means to have your bowels turn, your bowels yearn. Have you ever felt that? Uh, you're looking at someone or a situation, it's like the inside. Uh, it's just like, oh God, what do I need to do? Some Christians don't know what that is. Yet this man was moved with compassion. There was something on the inside that turned him and said, I have to do something. I have to be a part of something. Amen. His bowels moved with compassion. Understand this this morning, that there are people on the ground today, this morning, robbed by sin and beaten by death and left to die on their way to hell and guess who's walking by? It's you. It's me. <laughs> See, we like to think this is a story, but this is not a story. This is Jesus bringing up understanding about loving your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? It is the wounded. Verse 30, a man went from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among thieves who stripped him naked. They wounded him and they left him for dead, half dead. Understand this morning, this is not talking about a spiritual person that you're going to find on the side of the hand day, or sorry, a physical person. It is talking about spiritual people who live beside you every single day who you come in contact with, who you work with, uh, who you fellowship with, uh, who you go to the store with, who you go to the gym with. Uh, these are people this morning uh, who are beaten up by sin and death. 
and they're left to die waiting for a compassionate Christian. Our text is a call to action this morning to be the compassionate Christian. But a Samaritan man in verse 33, as he journeyed, he found him. He went to him and bandaged, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him. Whatever you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. It's a compassionate Christian. There are three things that make up a compassionate Christian that we can see in our text. And Number one is there was a time consideration. A time consideration. Probably this wasn't convenient for the Samaritan. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's not convenient to take care of someone or to go out of your way to bless them, to help them. It probably took away from what he was already doing. It probably cost him time with his family, time with his wife, time with his uh, business, if he had one, with his lands, uh, if he owned one, uh, with his job, whatever he did. It cost him time and money. It was a time consideration. He t spent his life taking him to an inn. He took time to invest in him, to pray, amen, to, to set aside time. I'm going to believe God. Amen. You know, there are things in the kingdom of God that move the kingdom of God forward, and one of those things is time. Amen. It takes a people who would be willing to invest time. You know, not just time to come to church on Sunday morning, amen. That is, you know, church is for you. <laughs> church builds you up. It doesn't build anybody else who's not here up. It might benefit them if you get riled up and tell them about Jesus, but this is for you. A compassionate Christian says, I have to do something about them outside the four walls. I'm gonna take some time here. Maybe it's taking time to pray, amen. That I will set aside time to pray, whether it be every day. It should be every day. Amen. Whether it's before a church service. We have service of prayer. But I'm going to spend time and I'm going to believe God for the people that God has brought to this church. I'm going to pray that God would help them, that God would move, that God would bless them. I'm going to pray that God would convict them, that God would help them. Time invested. It was a money consideration. He used oil and wine, the Bible said. Uh, these were medicines back in the day. They were things that were clean, alcohol. Uh, it, was a, it was a cleaner, a cleanser. Uh, the oil uh, was a healing agent. It helped, uh, like salve, uh, to uh, uh, not get dirty. He took his supplies, his money, his bandages, the things that would cost money, and he said, I will use that for the kingdom of God. I will bless this person. He's then paid with his own money for the inn. And then he said, listen, not only that, I will, I will, uh, uh, I will give over and above. He began to understand that in order to be compassionate, there's a money consideration. I find there are two people in the world. Two people in the world are people who are okay with giving money, but not okay with giving time. There are people who are okay with giving time, but not okay with giving money. <laughs> you would think, man, these two people could work together and they could have time and money. Amen. <laughs> Some people like the, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily work that way in life. Amen. But understand that he not only gave up time, but he gave up resources. You know that when you give, part of that goes to the spiritual upkeep of the souls in this house. When you give, uh, uh, not, just, uh, not just saving people outside, but it also uh, preserving people inside. We, uh, we, we go outside the walls and we evangelize, but we also need to keep people saved. You know, when you come to this house, amen, this is a place of healing and restoration. I don't know if you felt the presence of God this morning, but I did. If you didn't feel the presence of God, I maybe, maybe it sounds better in my, in my in-ears than it sounds out there. I don't know. I don't know. We had a volunteer. We had a, we had a new sound engineer this morning. Amen. My eight-year-old, almost nine-year-old son did sound this morning. For his first time, he was really nervous. And so I don't know. It might have sounded terrible out there, but in my ears, it sounded fantastic. 
But when we were singing, uh, oh, I exalt thee, I'm in the presence of God. I felt the presence of, all. oh, that is healing, amen. You go through the week and you're like, man, uh, 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 all the things that went wrong, you come to church uh, and there is a healing that happens in your soul and your spirit. Uh, what we're doing here, uh, this is important, amen. But it takes time and it takes money. There was a follow-up consideration. He said, I'm not just going to leave them. I'm not just going to drop a, drop a help and then abandon. I'm going to follow up. He gave money to the, the innkeeper. But then he said, I will come back. He said he arranged care. Please take care of him on verse 35. Whatever you spend, I will help more. I will give again to bless and to have compassion. Will you have compassion this morning? See, what Jesus was telling this man, this lawyer, this guy said, I want to make heaven my home. How do I do that? And Jesus said, you have to love your God and love your neighbor. And, and he said, but who is my neighbor? And Jesus lays this story out and says, who do you think is your neighbor? So let me ask you the question this morning. Who do you believe is your neighbor? I will tell you the people you believe are your neighbors are the people you invest time, money, and follow up into. If you believe in the work of God, you will give your time, your money, and your commitment to what God is doing. Will you have compassion this morning? Could your bowels yearn for the lost this morning? Could your bowels yearn for your neighbor in this place this morning? Amen. Verse 37, he who showed mercy on him, that's who his neighbor is. This is what the lawyer answered. Who is your neighbor? He said, he who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. Or in other words, go and do the same thing. Go show mercy on people. Have compassion on people. The calling of a Christian is to love this morning. To have compassion. You know, when you love somebody, you have compassion on them. Amen. John 13, 35, and we'll close with this, says, By this you will know, or all will know, sorry, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If you have love for one another, let me ask you this morning, do you have compassion? Could God stir your heart to be a person of compassion? Could God stir your heart in the areas that he is convicting you of this morning to have compassion on the hearts and in the lives of the people around you and in our world today? I wonder if we could bow our heads this morning. If you're here, bow your head, please, and close your eyes just for a minute. We just do that in respect to God, reverence to our neighbors, the people around us. This morning, I'm preaching a, a, a very simple and straightforward message about having compassion. But, but the, the reason we have compassion is because Jesus had compassion on us. Amen. The Bible says that everyone is a sinner before God and everyone will eventually stand before God and will have to give an account of their life before God and how they lived their life. Were they lived their life righteously or did they live their life for themselves and selfishly this morning? Maybe you're here and you're living in your sin this morning. You know exactly what I mean, that there, there's a conviction on your life. There are areas in your life you have not given your life to Jesus. You might know who Jesus is. You might have heard his name. But you do not have a personal relationship, a connection that comes because your sin has been dealt with. You can have a head knowledge of Jesus, but still not be right with God this morning. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. We want to pray with you if you're not right with God. We want to give you an opportunity to get your life right with God, to repent of your sin and say, Jesus, I have sinned. Would you forgive me? Would you 
Would you place some of that blood that you shed over my life? So when I stand before God, I will say, God will say, welcome into my presence. Every head is bowed. You're here. You're not right with God. You need to get right with God. We want to pray with you. Lift up your hand. We're going to pray with you all across this place. Lift up your hand. Say, Pastor, I'm not right with God. I see your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. No one's looking at you. It's you and God this morning. God wants to move in your life. Lift up your hand. Say, Pastor, I need to get my life right with God. I need to get my life right with God. Maybe you're here and you're a Christian. You're backslidden, though. You're backslidden in your heart. Your heart is so far away from God, you don't even know who he is. Amen. God wants to help you. Lift up your hand. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. Amen. If you lifted your hand, I see your hand. Amen. There's a couple of hands going up. If you lifted your hand in a minute, we're going to ask everybody to come and uh, everybody to stand. And some people are going to come and they're going to pray at this altar. I want to encourage you. Uh, I want to ask you to come with those people and someone will pray with you. And they're going to help you to receive Jesus. Church, I want to talk to you. Are you compassionate? I, I don't know what areas of life God deals with you in my sermons. I just preach what I feel God giving to me and but I believe there are people here who God spoke to you this morning. God convicted you. There are people here who you, are, you need to surrender to the will of God. There are people here you don't participate in areas that you need to participate in. There are people here God is clear as day. He's convicting you and speaking to you and touching your life this morning. You could be involved. You could be part of the reason that people get saved. You could be part of the reason that people are in heaven this morning. What a great call. What a great destiny. What a great purpose we have as a church that we can see people touched by God, locked into a local church, and serve God for the long term. Amen. It is worthy of our time. It is worthy of our investment. It is worthy of our lives this morning. A worthy cause to be compassionate on those who need compassion, amen. If God is speaking to you, you, want, you need to come and pray. You need to come and talk to him about what he's convicting you about, amen. Let's all stand this morning. If you lifted your hand, I want you to come, and f- come up and kneel down here and we're going to pray with you. If you're a church member here, God is speaking to you, he's convicting you, come right now and find a place to pray. Amen. Come right now. Uh, Praise to pray. Amen. I'm forgiven. Praise the Lord. Amen. You lifted your hand. Can we pray with you? you were forsaken. My brother, can we pray with you? And yeah, I'm come. accepted. Come on, you. Brother Theo, would you come? Yeah, you How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Brother Theo's going to pray with you. And I'm loving Praise God. If, if God's speaking to you, it's still time. You can come. Talk to God this morning. If you're not, lift your hands and sing. Let's just worship the Lord. Amazing love. Amazing love. How can it be? Oh, God, would you do a work this morning? In this house and in this place, I pray in Jesus' name, oh, God. Amazing love, I know it's true. Oh God, we give you glory this it's morning. It's my joy to, to honor, honor you in all I, I do. do. I honor you. you. And I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, Jesus, I'm accepted. I'm accepted. You were condemned. You were condemned. And I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me. Because you died. And Amazing love, amazing, amazing love. love. Ah. How can it be? Father God, we need you this morning. To my King who died, died for me. me. Oh. Amazing love. I know. Joy to honor you 
in all I do. I honor you. We sing, you are my king. You oh, sing it with us, church. We're talking about Jesus this morning. Jesus, you are my king. And if the sun has set you free, you are free indeed. So, Jesus, if the sun are my amazing love amazing love thank you Jesus how can it be would you my king you my king he would die for me amazing love amazing love I know it's true It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you. Would you bow your heads for a minute, lift your hands. We're going to pray together. We're going to ask God to help us. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer that says, God, I'm going to do your will. Amen. God, I want to be a compassionate Christian. If you're not ready to pray that, you just keep silence in your chair. Amen. You don't need to pray it. No pressure. But listen, if you're here, you say, God, I want to do your will. I want to be a, I want to be a bold Christian who would tell someone about my faith. I want to be someone who would spend time to pray instead of doing something selfish. I want to spend, I want to, I want to give to something that would be a long-term blessing and not just something that would be a t- short-term pleasure. Amen. We're going to pray together. I want you to say this with me with your hands lifted to heaven. Say, Jesus, you gave what no one else could give, the gift of salvation. You've set me free. You've died for my sin. And I thank you for your compassion. Help me to have the same compassion for your people. Help me to love people the same way that you love me. Give me opportunity to do your will. Help me, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's just give God praise. Lift your voice. Say, thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I lift you up, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. We glorify your name. We praise you and we worship you. We glorify the King of kings. And we thank you for that you've done, God. Oh, God is moving in this place this morning. I can feel his presence. And I can sense that he's touching and speaking to hearts this morning. And I want to encourage you. Don't let this day be the same as every other day. Let God do a miracle in your life. Let God use you this morning. Let God touch you this morning. I believe that we are on the verge of a, of a supernatural work of God where we're not going to be able to contain what God wants to do. There are so many people. I was driving. I'm going to tell you something. I'm driving down the street and oh, it burdens my heart even to this morning. I don't know why, but I seen this chubby little fat kid. Excuse my bad grammar. <laughs> but I say that because he looked like my brother when he was 12 years old. Just chubby, big old kid, all by himself, sitting on the bus, waiting for his bus. And man, the, he looked at me and the sadness in his eyes. Oh, the loneliness in that boy's eyes. Oh, God. You know, there are people this morning who are lonely. They got no friends. There are people this morning who've been raped and abused by their family members and their 
neighbors and their babysitters. There are people this morning who've been ripped off financially. There are people this morning who church has hurt them. Re- organized religion has ripped them off. Oh, and they're crying out on the inside. Their spirits are crying out, God, would you help me? They might not even pray. They might not say those words, but there's something going, man, there's got to be more to life than this. There are people right outside those doors when you leave this morning who are just like that. Don't make the mistake I did this last week of driving by that poor kid and I should have pulled over and I should have went and talked to him because... I don't know why. I was busy. I was working. He was in the bus. I don't know, in the middle of the road. Oh, but listen, there are other people that are open. Amen. There are times where I've obeyed God, and I've spoken to people, and and it was like they were meant to be there, and I was meant to be there, and God did a miracle in their life. Oh, two very different situations, but God moving in both. You can be the Samaritan this morning. You can be the compassionate Christian this morning. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need to know what to say. Sometimes a hello and a how are you and do you want to come to church with me is enough. There, Amen. I really feel the conviction this morning that the, us as a body, we got to tell people about Jesus. The end of time is coming. The days are going to be very soon where it's not going to, they're not going to have opportunity anymore. <laughs> Amen. But I believe that God has a people who would obey him in every church, in every area, in every city, in every nation. There's going to be a people who rise up and say, you know what, I want to do what the will of God. And I'm going to set aside my life to facilitate that. And I'm going to give my time. I'm going to pray. I'm going to follow up on people. I'm going to love on people. And I believe if, if just a handful of people would do that, if we could get that from 5% up to 9%, we should get it all the way up, shouldn't we? Every Christian should share their faith. Freely give what you have been given. That's what the Bible says. We give because he gave freely, freely. Release, release what God has given you. And you know, the principle of heaven is as you release, more comes. Sometimes not right now. You know, when you plant flowers, flowers come, and they give you more seeds for those same flowers that you planted. You plant wheat. You you plant one speck of wheat. You get lots of wheat back. You have one child. That child goes on to have children who has grandchildren, who has grandchildren, who has grandchildren. <laughs> every, every, all of life is based around the principle of giving. Unless one gives of himself, nothing comes in return. So I want to encourage you this morning to be a blessing. Be a compassionate Christian. Amen. Tell someone about Jesus. Get involved in something. Come to prayer. Give your money. Whatever God's dealing with you. I don't Amen. God wants to help and God wants to increase your life and bless you and use you as a vessel of honor this morning. Amen. Let's just bow our heads and we'll close in prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your blessing. Help us in this sobering, this somber moment, God, to remember the gift that you gave. But let it not be just for right now. Let us remember tomorrow, God. Let us remember the day after that. Put a burning in our hearts, a, a turning of the bowels, God, like our, like our insides are burning from the outside, inside out, God. Even as this Samaritan was yearning with compassion, God, give that to your people this morning. As people leave this place, that they would not forget about this moment, this morning, your word, that there would be a pushing towards action, God. Help us, Lord. We desperately need a move of heaven in our nation, oh Lord. We desperately need a touch from God. We need radical Christianity once again, God. Oh, our world is so dead and so lost and so broken, God. Let us be a people who would rise up. I pray, challenge our hearts. Keep us, God, as we go. Bless us as we go. Father, watch over our houses and our 
families, God, as we're driving, as we're going through this week, protection, the blood of Jesus, and let us live for your glory this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said, amen. Let's just give God praise one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you this morning. Have a wonderful week. Come again for service tonight and Wednesday. Amen. You know the song? I was going to do the song, but I was like, I know one's going to know it. I, like, I know it's good sometimes. Am I to say it? Everyone needs some passion. Uh, I was going to do it, and then I was like, I was, on, I was torn. Well, and it was, I could slow it down, but then no one.